What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit video. In this video we'll be covering the differences between materials and material assets because there's a very distinct difference and if you know that you're well off and much better off than most. Before we get into it, if at any point in this video you do happen to learn something, if you wouldn't mind please demolishing that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Be sure to stick around to the end because all the knowledge, it, it continues. You're, you're bound to learn something all the way through to the end of the video. I sure hope you do. So jumping right into it now, what are we looking at? We're looking at materials and specifically the appearance tab versus the other tabs. So in a previous video, I covered everything that you needed to know about identity tab, graphics tab, and the appearance tab of materials in Revit. And so I'd highly recommend that you check those out first before watching this video because it will start to give you an idea of what all these different tabs of the materials do and then again where material assets play. So before we get into it really what is a material asset? So material asset is you can basically equate that to the appearance tab of a material in that everything that falls under this appearance tab is considered the asset of the material. And we have the asset information here, the name, the stone, all that. It's all up here. We can see the name again is up here. And if you look at the left, I've, of course, named this stone as well. But I didn't do that to confuse you. But I want to show you in an example how these materials versus the material assets are compared. So what do we want to do? Well, at this point, we want to keep an eye on this number, this number and this hand this little icon with the number and this number will actually change and so what will drive this number to change is the number of places that you have this material asset used and so the idea is that I could have an infinite number of materials over here at the left that hold this value the appearance tab for this stone and so if I have multiple materials that have this exact same stone then we're going to see this number increase so the idea is if you know that you want a particular material to be a material asset, sorry, to be associated to one mater material in the project only, make sure this number is always zero. So the nice thing about that is that if you happen to see a number that is greater than zero, that means that this asset is used in different materials. And one way around that, well, the, the way around that is to simply duplicate the asset. And in the previous video when we were looking at this appearance tab we had to do that because we started with one of these older materials and we wanted to duplicate it and start from something fresh so once we did that we were able to then see the number go to zero telling us that that material asset is only used in that material and no other material this basically says zero as in this material is used nowhere else whereas if you see a one or a two that means it's used in one or two other materials so let's start to see this. So maybe I want to duplicate this stone. And of course, the traditional thing to do is simply to right click it and duplicate. Okay, so let's call this stone, of course, but let's call this inverted, inverted. So I'm gonna invert this stone eventually. So we've got stone and stone inverted. So I'm still clicking on stone and I'm in the appearance tab, but I see this one now. And so this stone asset is now on one other material. And it just so happens that because I duplicated the material, I did not duplicate the asset, but it just so happens that the asset went with that material. So as I click from stone to stone inverted, nothing changes as far as the asset because it's the exact same. Okay, that's great. So I'm gonna take this point, I know we have, we have still more work on, but I've got two floors in the background and I wanna apply these two materials. Let's hit okay. So I'm, I know I have the stone applied here, but I want to apply the inverted stone here. So let's click on this. Let's change this stone to stone inverted. Perfect. I'm going to do that. Now, great. I've got my stone and my stone inverted. So we should be good to go, right? Well, mm, let's look at it again. So I'm going to go back to the appearance tab of stone. And like I said, maybe I want to invert this stone inverted. So I'll click on the base color here, and I want to just invert the image. Okay, great. Perfect. It's inverted. That's exactly what I want. But if you notice here at the left, and even if I hit apply, we can see that the stone and stone inverted are both now inverted. And why is that? Well, I explained that before. It's because 
this same stone asset is applied to one other material, and that happens to be stone inverted. So they're both sharing the same material asset. And so there's a number of instances where you actually might want this to happen. So you might have a series of materials that are, let's say stone, just for this example, but you have different properties of different stones, but they just, they happen to look the same. You know, maybe, maybe you have different manufacturer information on one material versus another, because again, all the identity and graphics data are associated to that specific material. If I were to go to the identity tab and call the description here, not inverted, and I go to stone inverted and type inverted, we can clearly see as I toggle between them, I see not inverted and then inverted. Okay, so you might have different information and data for that material, but it, you want it to look the same. And while it also has the same, you might have it want it to have the same value, so maybe ST1. And so, of course, whenever you exit the dialog box, you're going to get an error saying, of course, once you apply these materials, you have the same uh, mark value applied for multiple. Of course, I need to apply this here, ST-1. Once I do that, now we get the error elements have duplicate mark values of course we know that and that's okay to have that because in this case maybe it's the exact same tile but it's different manufacturers or at least you want it to look the same through the appearance you want it to look the same appear the same that makes sense but you want it to schedule differently as two different materials that's why you might want that now so the real problem here and what i see tons of people make and honestly i made this mistake when i started using revit materials is that people tend to simply duplicate the material like we did and then they'll go into this new material and if they want to invert it or something like we've done they'll invert it they'll hit okay and realize everywhere else is now all the same as opposed to one being inverted and one not well like i said before that's because the asset we need to actually make this asset specific and unique so i'm going to go back to this stone and i'm going to change this from inverted to a normal, not inverted. And I now I'm going to go to this material. And again, I see this one, so I know it's somewhere else. It's on one other material, but I want to make it inverted and have it be its own material. So then I'll duplicate it. And now, perfect. We can see that this hand is now holding a zero. So this is the only place that this asset is being used. And we know that again because it's the zero. So now I can start to rename it, make it look good make it look how I want to. I can now go to the trouble of inverting it. There we go. And now we can see even here, just an easy preview. I have my stone and then I've got my stone inverted. That's perfect. And we can clearly see that I have zero here and it's, it's exactly what I want. And I'm gonna hit okay. I will change this type and I'll duplicate this just to make another type. And I'll change the material to stone. And now we can start to see that we have a second material. We got our regular stone and our inverted stone. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And that's really how to use It's the difference between the material itself and the material asset. Again, I'll run through this one more time just as a, a very quick reminder. Everything at the left is the material. Everything in the appearance tab is the asset. You can think of that the materi material asset is within the material and that you take that material asset somewhere else if you want to use it somewhere else or you can duplicate it. It basically is its own entity and that the material itself is just kind of wrapping around the asset that is the appearance. Finally, what we can do is we under the additional settings in the, mat in the manage tab, we have material assets and we this is basically just an asset editor. And so I can click this button here and it will open all of my assets and this this exhaustive list is everything that's installed with Revit by default. I tend to not use any of these. The only reason I would use any of these is I would pull from these physical assets to just start with a material and then just replace the material maps to make my own. But oftentimes I'm coming back to my document assets and these are all the assets that are in your current document. And then just pulling something in, adding it, replacing it. So a lot of times what I'll do in other cases, if I have a material that I know I want a different asset on, then I can, I can make a new material and maybe I'm just making a new material and I know I want to use that stone. So I can just, you know, let's call this stone two, just for the heck of it. So we got this stone two, and again, the default is like some generic 
asset and I don't necessarily want this because it's gonna look gray I don't it's not gonna look good but maybe this is another example of where this stone will look I want it to look exactly like this first stone okay well what can we do we can replace that go into document assets search stone because I called it stone and now we can see our stone and our stone inverted so I'm gonna click stone and now we can see that stone 2 looks exactly like stone 1 and that's because it's now sharing this asset because I can see a one this asset is used in one other place than just this material and it happens to be stone this other material so that will do it for the differences between materials here on the left and material assets which make up the appearance tab if you have any questions which you might leave those in the comment section below I'll be happy to answer all of those if you stuck around this long you are awesome and if you did happen to learn something or just like the video please demolish that like button it really helps me out a lot and also finally, if you wouldn't mind, change the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That also helps me out so, so much. Thank you all for being here, watching, spending your time. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you in the next video.